Welcome back, we're the Huge Movie Fanatics, and we're continuing our Christmas theme, uh, hor uh, horror and action movie um, reviews, and we're using a little transitional piece right here. This one, uh, we are going to be reviewing, um, do you remember who directed the movie? Well, the Gremlins. Oh, oh, it's, it's, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> I know who wrote it. I, I, well, it's who, the guy who did The Howling and uh, Inner Space and Joe Dante. Joe Dante, that's what I thought it was. Okay, so Joe Dante's Gremlins. Uh, Gremlins is a sort of great atmospheric um, uh, horror comedy action y kind of um, little movie that takes place around Christmas time um, and starring Phoebe Cates, who oh. is terrific. Man, uh, uh, <laughs> she gives a great performance in the movie. Um, the movie itself is, is pretty good. It's written by Christopher Columbus, who um, uh, went on to do the Home Alone movies and the Harry, uh, first two Harry Potter movies. He's done a lot of Christmas-themed movies, if, yeah. if you notice. Um, but, uh, like, the movie is kind of uneven, because it, it, it doesn't really know if it wants to be sort of a comedy or spoof, or if it wants to be a straight horror movie. Um, and I think that kind of detracts a little bit from its quality. Uh, but you know what? I went with it. It's such a cool idea. I love the little mogwai. Uh, and I like the, the lore that was built into the whole thing where if you uh, get him wet, if you feed him uh, after midnight and all this stuff. I do have a problem about the feeding after midnight because isn't the technically midnight is subjective. <laughs> after midnight is every every time right now i mean yeah, yeah. After, after every time right every moment is after midnight well also midnight subjective like i'm assuming these things came from china because they uh, there was the chinese man in the beginning of the movie who sold it yeah. to him so they come from asian descent wouldn't midnight then be different than but you know what it's a fable it's like a yeah, it's a little but, fairy tale but, but but when you tell when you give someone a little cute thing and you just, they don't feed them after midnight it's like okay it's after midnight i can never feed them again yeah, I, mean, I mean when 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 can i start feeding them? after after maybe after noon yeah. maybe after noon so so the the 12 hours after midnight maybe not and then you can feed them right at lunchtime maybe yeah well so, but you're right but, i mean i am being over critical uh, like it's, it's a great little Christmas fairy tale of, uh, <laughs> of what what not to do with uh, with your new present. <laughs> like like uh, it's it was just a fun it's a fun movie. Um, the horror aspects in it work really well. The evil gremlins, especially Spike, I believe was his name. Yeah, I think uh, that's he that's was great. Too. Like uh, and all the other gremlins, they were like they're such fun little beasts, and uh, I enjoyed that. Um, the comedy aspects of it, like, uh, they're all sitting in the movie theater watching Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. I was all for that. That was fun. Like, had, they should have really picked a direction and stuck with it instead of trying uh. to walk the line and not really being able to stay on it. Um, One thing I thought was very disturbing is, this goes in line with your don't know what to be a horror movie or comedy aspect, is I think that guy who's actually in every Joel Dante movie, I can't remember his name, the, the old guy from Little Shop of Horrors, but he was like the, the plow driver or something like that. Yeah, don't, doesn't him and his wife get killed by the <laughs> yeah, plow? They get killed. In, in, a, in a very like comedic scene, and I think that that's a little... I mean, it, it, it is a bit I much. Mean, I think to have people... I don't know if people dying was the right thing to do in that movie. I mean, like, yeah, if you were going to make it a, a straight-on horror movie, have the people die, or if you're going to make it funny... Just have them get, like, hurt, maybe. Yeah, I mean, maybe. Because I, I always... Ever since the does the, the principal or the, no the science teacher dies too right I think he does that that old woman she's the only one that I that was wanted kind of, to see die that was funny too it was fine with me to see her go that's the kind of or whatever um, but but like them just people like the guy and his wife who's just yeah you know. but like I mean they show up in the sequel so maybe they're not dead. Um, oh, then they didn't die. I guess they didn't die. But okay. like, I mean, you're meant to. <laughs> you're meant to think they did. In 1984, oh, they were dead. In oh. 19. Well, I think I think you're right. I think you're right. As long as you mention it, that, that I think in the movie, if you don't see him again, they're supposed to be dead. And they they were clearly they, dead. Yeah. Like I mean, that was the implication. <laughs> when you get run over with a plow, there's no real coming back from that. But um, uh, you know, I I like the movie. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it three and a half. Whoa. The reason I give it three and a half is because there are moments in it where it's like near perfection. Like I liked um, <laughs> the subtle moments with uh, the lead guy, who knows who he is, and then Phoebe Cates walking oh, down yeah. and she's telling her horrible. 
Christmas stories of why she doesn't celebrate Christmas, why she doesn't like it, and it's this kind of beautifully haunting scene, and like, the movie was jumping every genre, that was, yeah. it was great when it was dramatic, it was great when it was comedic, it was great when it was Because it's weird, it's like a Christmas movie, but yet one of the characters in the movie hates Christmas. Yeah. And says and tells I, why. Yeah, I mean, there are so many things to like about this movie, they just didn't really blend together all that well, and I mean, that that is definitely a problem, and the movie could have been so much better, but you know, it has a lasting sensation and feel and whatnot, so I'm gonna go with three and a half for this. Right. Plus, the, the, I'm just a fan of fairy tales, and this one is kind of a neat one. Um, so, I'm gonna let you take it off from here. I think this was executive produced by Spielberg, right? Yeah, Spielberg. And I don't, it was rated PG? Yeah, it's know. PG. This would be for PG-13. Like, this was this right was at that uh, PG-13 It should have been line. PG-13. Yeah, and certainly. Spielberg, for whatever reason, I don't know if he just owns the movie industry, could always get, it seems like he could always get away with nasty stuff in family movies like that, and there's all kinds of, you know, there's gremlins going <laughs> patooey and, and spitting this nasty ass yeah. thing. I think, I think the thing, probably a lot of kittens and gerbils and shit probably felt, died in the microwave because of that, putting the gremlin in the microwave thing. I bet they gave a lot of kids bad ideas. I bet there's a, many a dead pet because of that. All this stuff that, Steve, that Spielberg ends up putting into the movie that somehow gets by the ratings board. I don't know. It's like, here you're going. I mean, when you're Steven Spielberg, you have a little way to <laughs> When you're <laughs> Steven like, Spielberg. Yeah, you have a way to break the rules. But I, I'm actually very kind of disturbed by that stuff. I'm going to go two stars. I've never, I watched it back in the day when it was popular. I've never was a, a, a huge fan of it. Um, I do like the, the, the family. Actually, Corey Feldman's got a little bit. Yeah, he, he's got some. He's like two the scenes, tree. yeah. Uh, Corey, we've got some classic old school Corey Feldman in that, which is cool. I like the family. The, the oh, the you know what? Uh, one of the cool aspects of all this goes, but this goes to the family. I like the family. Yeah. The, the guy and the the inventor. The inventor father, yeah, he's great. Now, now those inventions are funny. That's some of the funny, for my money, some of the funniest stuff in the movie are the inventions and his reaction to them always like being. Did, did you get the great in-joke in the movie where in the background while he's on the phone you see uh, the time machine from... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. they well, cut, they the cut away and then they cut back to the uh, to it. the time machine is gone. There's just a puff of smoke and people are standing around like... Oh, looking I think the... I missed that. Yeah, it's just subtle in the background. But oh, that was one of my favorite what, things. What time machine? From... It was from the time machine movie. Oh, like the time it's machine the, It's movie. the flat out yeah, the yeah. time machine. No, I, time I wasn't machine. watching the background. Yeah, it, it, like, there are little jokes like that. Uh, it's really kind of cool. Well, Joe Dante is undeniably, back in the day, unfortunately, he's not, I don't think he's doing much now, but was very, very, very talented uh, guy, and, and, you know, howling, and, and, and some, okay. of the, some of the stuff that he did, Piranha, you know, uh, you know, was was really great, and I, I'm, a, I'm a kind of a fan of Joe Dante to a certain extent. Um, in that aspect, I grew up with, I saw Inner Space in the theater, and I, I, I like that as well. So... Uh, you know, Joe. I like Joe Dante. Who did that? Did Jerry Goldsmith do the music? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. So the the music's kind of cool. One one element that. Oh yeah, that's pretty. Oh, I forgot about that altogether. Yeah, that's pretty pretty famous. And uh, one aspect that I didn't really care about when I was a kid that I well, I just saw it recently, kind of a year or two ago when I got I got the DVD for three bucks at half price books, <laughs> and. Uh, I'm like, God dang, the, 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 because it was filmed in California and it's supposed to take place, I don't know where, any, where I don't know, East Coast, Midwest, yeah, or something. Somewhere. And the snow, the snow like on the cars and on the ground, like especially on the cars, it's just like spray painted on. Yeah. It's just like, for me, it's just like, bad. At least they tried though. Bad. I mean, they could have. Yeah. I know, they could have had just like pretty the fuzz that you see on the ground in some yeah, movies. I know, but as a, as a complaint, that that's a huge complaint. Just a, just a production design complaint, which you know he probably thinks is. is I overlooked it. I mean, it's like well, look at it now, mother. <laughs> <laughs> but will. yeah, I'll go two stars. I mean, I think that um, it's competent, and like I say, I love the the warm family and the the Magui has brought back and stuff. It's very cute and fuzzy. And, yeah and stuff, and I, I just think that it does go a little overboard and a little far as far as what the gremlins do and what they do to the gremlins and stuff for, for that particular rating and family-oriented movie. Yeah. So there you go. If you're done... I'm done. I'm done. Uh, Merry Christmas Merry and Christmas. Mogwai yourself. <laughs> don't eat after midnight. Don't eat after midnight, which would mean you don't eat ever again.
Just die. <laughs> Just die. Merry Christmas.